Uh, now we shall move ahead with another positive practice case uh, wherein we uh, can see the experience will be narrated with the barriers and bottlenecks uh, with the ways to overcome them. That is, I think, the excellent process uh, any organization or an uh, uh, kind of entity would go through. And for the net zero MSMEs, uh, it is kind of a difficult one to overcome and to achieve that. Uh, this will be uh, taken by Mr. Praveen Khan, who is the head of sustainability at Sparks Minda. Over to Mr. Khan. I would request Ishwari to open the presentation. Thank you. Over to Thank Mr. Khan. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, are you going to open the slides for me? Wonderful. Great. Thank, thank you very much. So how much time will I have, Zahir, if you can guide me? So you will have uh, 15 minutes alerted, uh, but uh, as we are overshooting a little bit, if you can like wind it, wind it up uh, maybe uh, a little early, I will indicate. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I'll try my level best doing that. So thank great uh, day of learning for me. I must say thank you very much. Namaste to all of you. My name is Praveen Kern, representing Minda Corporation Limited, which is uh, also known as Spark Minda Group, and uh, willing to share here some of our practices of sustainability. How are we trying to follow the footsteps of uh, the bigger vision of uh, Honorable Prime Minister 2070? And I also heard that if the country has to be net zero by 2070, then the automobile sector has to be net zero by somewhere close to 2050, uh, 55 maximum. And if that is so, then the OEMs are taking their, uh, you know, they are, they are the stewards and they have taken up the step. We just heard uh, some Darshiji about it. And we as an uh, component manufacturers and suppliers to our uh, OEMs, we also have to follow those footsteps. And importantly, the bigger agenda is definitely to take care of the environment. We know about the heat waves, which is uh, multiplying 10 times comparison to last few decades. We, we also know about the GDP losses, which has gone more than 5% up comparison to the previous years. We, we heard about the sea levels, the temperature rising by 1.5 degree. And we are aware about all these problem statements. Well, I would like to share that once I was talking to somebody uh, uh, in a chit chat and I, I, I asked the person that uh, you are running a business and uh, you are uh, not doing anything for the environment. Um, what, what and why are you doing like this? So the person said that, why should I do this? Uh, if I'm using electricity, I'm paying for it. If I'm taking water, um, I'm buying the water. And then therefore, why should I, why should I be bothered? This is not my responsibility. And this is where, uh, you know, we are all mistaken and we are not able to think about the sustainability. If there's no water, there's no business. If there's no electricity, there's no power, you can't run your business. So if you're, no, if you're not having all these things, you cannot run your business, business. So you would not sustain, nothing would exist in that case. And none of us for that reason, we heard about uh, 2075 that Andaman Nicobar is going to uh, be erosioned uh, in the water. Uh, what would happen after that to the habitats out there? And there are many other things that we are hearing day by day. So the climate risk, which is the problem statement, which definitely is there. So each one of us have to have to do something. Um, as an organization, what are we doing? We as an automotive manufacturer trying also to bring in to those green practices, environment friendly practices, which would support us, which would support the environment and which would bring the ecosystem as a whole to become sustainable. If you can bring in the next slide, please. <clears throat> next again. Well, we have done few things. We were traditionally been doing and measuring ourselves for close to 15 years. That how many, I mean, we, we heard plantation is good. And we, therefore we started doing it without, you know, knowing this uh, uh, concept of ESG, sustainability and all that. We knew if you put a tree, it will not be a problem. Paper bachayenge, to isse peed katne se bachayenge. If you are saving electricity, it is going to be retained for you for future. Solar energy is renewable. Water is something which is going to make you survive. We knew these things and therefore we were doing all few things. 
and we were just not doing that but we were also measuring them across india we have 28 factories and in each of these factories we were trying to imbibe this system and at times we had to impose this system also to adopt all such practices but very recently we also learned that we can organize it in a much better way so what did we do if you can bring into the next slide we meanwhile heard that the entire ecosystem is evolving around this sustainability effort blackrock said that we would invest only in those companies who are reporting on environment social governance harvard university is saying that the shareholders gets uh, attracted to those companies only who are sustainably uh, doing their operations toyota said that will be getting the environment friendly materials there are customers and if we have to work with them we have to do it mosri said that we will have will be having only sustainable seats the seats that it supplied through the component manufacturer has to be sustainable in nature has to be eco friendly and if we have to do that business with them we have to do it honda said that 90% of our uh, materials has to be recycle should be having recyclability so this data is also there you know this statistics are statistics are pulling us to be very much aware about all such things at the same time um, look at our peers for for example madhusan they are paying a lot of attention towards solarization bosch they are bringing in their water uh, uh, utilization 25% lesser and they are making this commitment by 2050 i got this data from somewhere then so is uh, get going to get neutral by uh, 2035 so the ecosystem as a whole is evolving towards it we also tried in the same direction so after a lot of deliberation among ourselves we bring in brought in a policy we call it a sustainability sustainability policy this this is towards environment is this is towards the society this is towards the governance and we have trying touching upon all such components so uh, consider, considering the time constraint uh, i would not go through this but i'll tell you that this sustainability policy is a supplementation towards the sustainable development goal towards bringing in that ecosystem which is sustainable in nature which is which is going to benefit us at large which is going to supplement ultimately towards the net zero agenda of the company that's the first thing we did we got an approval from the board about it we circulated it across all our business we we made people aware about this sustainability sustainability policy that what is this all about and everybody has to abide by this sustainability policy in our overall system of operation be that manufacturing non manufacturing operational wherever so this is in place today this we did in the year 2021 next slide please we understand that an framework is required to have that inclusive inclusivity concept the care for people concept the ethical business sustainable operation and just not that but also the supply chain and the value chain that we have therefore a framework was created so the awareness was given over these two things which is the policy and the framework next slide what was important to implement it a governance structure the structure which establishes this policy this framework and gets it implemented across our group so there are three tier structure one of course at the board level we call it a sustainability committee the board level committee then we have the group sustainability committee and here we got people from different domains you can see other than the chair person we have the person from human resource marketing purchase technology treasury we haven't left any of the functions who somewhere directly or indirectly are going to be associated with this entire agenda and the framework and finally at the third tier you can see the sustainability council now this is something which is recommended also if you have 
many operations within your within india or anywhere else for that reason for for the component manufacturing i would suggest you need to have a sustainability concept in each of your factory who would be responsible for the implementation of that policy and the framework and the actions which are decided post certain data collection i will come to data collection also so this is how we created that governance structure in 2021 and we brought in a report where are we today if you can move on to the next slide please so the report brought in certain figures that we 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 can conserve some energy which is close to 10000 gigajoule we recycle 31% of the water which previously we were using we brought in certain social indicators we have csr programs we brought in the diversity inclusion agenda we employed around 1000 people with disabilities within our organization trained them for how to work on the automotive industry we have all types of people with disabilities working within our own organization impacted approximately 11000 lives in fact uh, in february uh, itself from 1st february to 10th february we are holding another camp for empowering people with disability and we'll also be engaging them for employment and skilling and we have close to 35 partners uh, for this program so this is how we got certain reports that where are we today next slide please and then we are deciding upon certain actions what can we do how can we Uh, conserve energy how to reduce the emission energy management how can we what are the processes that we can bring in value add uh, what are the water practices that we can bring in how can we recycle reuse reduce all those three are practices trying to tap on that deliberate on that the capex investment for it convincing the ceos for doing it if not all possible within one year then the years to come allocation of the budget for the same and uh, hurain asked me the other day that have you also get kept certain targets for the being net zero i said no i do not have it right today i'm trying to identify my data i'm also trying to be uh, be very much feasible with my business where i'll understand that what would be that year when i'll be able to bring in all such manufacturing changes and investment which is cap capital investment for bringing in all such uh, changes of green manufacturing and then i can make that commitment also but yes this this narrative is there inside this thought process is there inside and therefore if you can bring in the next slide we are going ahead we are doing a few things we did some solarization we are bringing in some material saving initiatives uh, if you can also move into the next slide i'm just looking at the time we are bringing in those products which are for the people which are for the environment for example you can see adas this is that one technology that we brought in brought in through one of the one of the uh, jvs uh, uh, this this is this is for road safety this tells the driver that how could you be protected in a road and it gives a 360 degrees uh, alarm to you likewise we have ira iras which is for the two wheeler we also have a range of products for ev electric vehicles and probably directly i am not contributing but if my oem like tata uh, we just heard uh, uh, samdarshi ji if they are using our this products then i feel that the job is done which is for the net zero our efforts are integrated next slide one small case study i would like to present one of our customer to whom we are supplying our locks and keys uh, in a plastic bag and they somehow like uh, approached us and they said that how can we replace it we said that yeah why not we we have some of the ways we can do it can we do it in a cloth bag which is which is uh, which can be used two three four times and the customer got ready we got it stitched by the women who are in and around our factory who are being impacted through our csr programs we taught them the uh, stitching tailoring and they manufactured these bags 36000 pieces of first lot is already gone to our customer they are pretty happy with that and the money that they have paid trust me it was a little more than the plastic bags and this they were quite happy that these women are being remunerated also because this 
this patch is done in this box. Now these bags are coming back to us and we can use it three, four times. We calculated the carbon footprint will reduce by 3.5 kg COE two per kg of the plastic removed. So I, I just took one of the examples that this is how we can bring in changes. These small, small things can uh, bring bigger change towards the bigger agenda of net zero. Can I have the next slide? Okay, so these are these are the women, you know, you can see that they, they've been doing it. If you can move to the next slide, they are able to earn around 15,000 rupees in a month. So see, this is the roadmap. 22 to 23, we are collecting data. We would be doing the gap assessment. What are the areas of intervention? Capacitating the team is very, very important. The entire, you know, workforce today is not aware how to deliver it. Yes, the basics are there with the people, but again, the capacity building is going to play a very, very critical role. BRSR will be doing, that's mandated now. ESG report, we came out this year also in a 15 days time, we are coming out with a new report that will continue. GHG, now scope one, scope two is easy. Scope three, tricky. We have to do it. Scope three for Tata's will be done by us. Scope three for us will be done by our suppliers. And we are looking at and trying to map all of them. But I'll restrict myself. And of course, next to that is the SBTI, which is science-based target initiatives. Uh, Sandeshi ji also talked about it. And TCFD, which is the plans for the years to come. So the roadmap is there and we are trying to do it. If you can move to the next slide. Um, Oh, that's my last slide. But before I close, with this two, three, four years of uh, organized effort and last 10 years of unorganized intention, what is my learning, which I'd like to tell you, data is important. We have to know where are we today. That will lead towards the action, first point. Second, policy framework has to be there Therefore, it's a good idea to start thinking about it, to get it for your organization, to get it approved from the board. If there's a policy, if there's a framework, people look at it, people try to comply to this. Third, the governance structure will have a role to play at the centralized level in the corporate or at the manufacturing level at different plant locations. That's my third uh, suggestion or observation, I could say. The disclosure and the transparency is going to be important. Fifth, replication and scale up will only happen if this entire system works like this. Four recommendation I would like to make from my desk to ECMA being the member of ECMA. Maybe we can have one compendium, annual compendium where these good practices can be uh, 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 printed and can be circulated. Awards and acknowledgements, they do boost people to work better. Somebody who's a water champion, somebody who's a plantation champion, somebody becomes a solar champion. You know, we can have four, five, six categories of awards and annually we can plan it. The sustainability professionals are less in the country. It's a tricky one. We need to think about it and therefore we'll have to plan some of the programs with academia, those who are offering these sustainability courses. So they are less, uh, you know, the organizations are confused. Kisko Banai is a sustainability champion. Who is the green manager? Is the CSR person or an engineer of the company? The engineer would not understand the social uh, prospects of it. And the social guy would not understand the calculation of carbon emission. So a, a combination of it. And fourth and uh, last uh, recommendation from my side would be to have a sustainability committee as a mandatory committee. Uh, maybe if not today, in an year or two, ACMA should make these recommendations. So um, that's all from my side. I look forward for further collab and uh, I look forward further to learn from all of you. Thank you very much for this opportunity to all of you. Uh, thank you, uh, Praveen Khan, sir, for this excellent uh, presentation that we saw. And none of it was actually uh, kind of a thought only. It is practiced. It is like uh, tried and tested. And it's kind of a running a government. 
from the from the start of it from the freedom point of it i mean it's uh, it requires a lot of effort lot of thought process lot of uh, conviction to go around it